We changed a lot throughout the years of growing up. From eating cereals to making our own breakfast, we adopt new beliefs and opinions that we once despised. Even our attitudes change. This raises a question. Are you the same person you were 10 years ago? To try to answer this question, we have to address what makes you, you. Personal identity is the thing that makes a person unique. But what part of you is your personal identity? Is it your body or your brain? Or is it entirely a different thing that does not reside in a physical substance? Our cells are constantly being replaced or repaired. Skin cells last a month, colon cells last to around 4 days, and our skeleton is completely regenerated after about 10 years. So we are a new person every 10 years? This problem is similar to a thought experiment called the ship of Theseus, where they argue whether a ship is really the same if all parts and components of the ship is replaced. But surely, a ship is different from a human. So in terms of ourselves, yeah, we are different from our past self. But there's an exception. The nerve cells in the brain do not renew themselves. According to John Locke, personal identity can be found on consciousness or memory, not on the body or soul. So we are the same person if we can remember the past experiences as that specific person. We can change as a person, but the person has to be connected to the actions and thoughts of the past. Whether playing a kite or feeling the blades of the grass as an 8 year old to be that same person. He claimed that consciousness is not on the soul because in the case of reincarnation, a soul may not remember their past life and a person claiming to be Plato has to possess Plato's consciousness of thoughts and actions like he did in the past. So personal identity cannot be based on the soul since a soul can have many personalities. But what about false memories and memory loss? Is the person still the same person if it has no memory of their past selves? Should we imprison someone that committed a crime that they don't remember? According to Locke, you're a different person, even when sharing the same body, even when the actions and thoughts, though not conscious, can affect you physically and psychologically. A sleeping person is different from a waking person. Therefore, we cannot punish a waking person for the crimes that a sleeping person did that the waking has no consciousness of. Maria Shaxman said the exclusion of unconscious experiences was short-sighted since unconscious experiences can affect conscious experiences like catching a ball without being fully aware or using a knife or a fork with no memory of the formation of the skills. She said personal identity can be further understood with self-assigned narrative without ignoring unconscious experiences. In other words, we have to monitor our own experiences. But who exactly is the observer inside you, and which narrative are you objectively observing? It would be problematic for people with multiple personality disorder. Schachtman questions, why should it matter that memory experiences in question be in one substance rather than another? Claiming the brain and consciousness is separate, thus cannot affect the sense of self, even when the source of thoughts come from the brain. Derek Parfit argued that the brain is crucial since a brain is responsible for our psychological experience. One of the most known cases is Phineas Gage, where he survived having an iron rod shooting through his head, damaging his brain. People closest to him then noticed some significant changes about his personality where they described him to be aggressive, profane, impatient, and stubborn, and then later felt like he was no longer engaged. However, many of the reports are inconsistent and exaggerated. A report by his doctor stated that the changed personality only happened during his recovery, which took about two months to heal. He then worked in stables with horses, which proves that he was not what people claimed him to be. Since working with horses requires discipline and calmness, 
but there are other examples of brain injury leading to personality changes, like this patient 5334, a woman with a brain tumor removed, leaving damage at the brain. According to her husband, she was highly irritable and grumpy before the surgery, and after the surgery, she was happier, more outgoing, and more talkative. Or this patient 2410, with brain aneurysm, who before surgery was prone to anger and short-tempered, and after surgery, more passive and easygoing. So, sometimes, brain surgery is used as a last resort for people with extreme psychological problems. That being said, it brings us to the bleak history of psychosurgery, where lobotomy is used for people with mental disorder during the late 1880s when physicians at the time removed parts of the brain context of their patients, leaving patients with less ability to feel intense emotions, less prone to worry, and appearing childlike. They also looked zombie-like and were unable to speak or think for themselves. Parfit argued that we value our psychology more than our body because just like the case with brain damage, it causes change in personality. So dividing your brain to multiple parts means that you survive as multiple people even when there can be only one original you. Humans can potentially survive with only half of the brain and still function normally. Suppose you have a twin with fatal brain disease and you give half of your brain to your twin. Then the next day, he started to behave like you and have the same personality like you, given that you both have identical DNA because you're twins. But who's in your twin's body? Why are you still here and not there in his body? It gets even more complicated when we include the torture thought experiment where a mad scientist captured you and say, Brad Pitt, and then changed the data of your brain to Brad Pitt's brain and Pitt's to yours. You then woke up in Pitt's body. Then the mad scientist came to you and asked you, who should he torture, you or Brad Pitt? Most people would say your old body, since now you're in Pitt's body. But how about if we change things up a bit? Again, the scientist captured you and Pitt, but before he did anything, he asked you, who should he torture? You would point at Pitt, but the scientist then said he would wipe all your memories clean and rewire your brain to think you're Brad Pitt since you will have all his personalities, memories, and dreams. So you will think you're Brad Pitt after the swap. Does that change your choice? You would probably still say torture the Brad Pitt's body even after the data swap, your personality, memories, and dreams are in that body. So in the first situation, you would choose to torture your body and the second situation, Brad Pitt's body. But both of the situations were exactly the same. The only difference was the point when you were asked to choose who gets tortured. If you choose the first situation, you would choose your brain data than your physical body and brain. And if you choose the second situation, you're choosing your physical body and brain over your brain data. So where are you really? in the data of your personality or your brain and body. So, the question regarding the past, present, and future self has been puzzling philosophers for hundreds of years. People have different opinions about it and each theory has its own contradictions and flaws. Maybe it's about continuity, the things that connect us to our past self, whether it is our body or psychology that is only special to us, one else on earth has. There is no definitive answer to answer the question whether we are the same to our past self. The world isn't black and white, and maybe there is no one answer that would satisfy the question. We're always changing and evolving, and we're always different, yet there's something in us that stays the same. The connection of us to the past, even at times where it seems like it's been disconnected, like having dementia or being a fetus, is up to us or people around us to determine whether we are the same or not, even when we don't feel the same way. Hey guys, thanks for watching. What do you think? 
Are you a physical substance or some abstract being? And are you the same to your past self? Let me know in the comment and like and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks.